this is the, the second talk of the second session, the second talk with a question uh, as the title. Um, and our question is, are pets and algorithmic accountability uh, at loggerheads? So there's like three components here really. There's like, what do I mean by pets? What do I mean by algorithmic accountability? And what do I mean by this uh, loggerheads? Um, okay, and to illustrate this, I'm gonna focus on MPC because I come from an MPC background um, and MPC is like a particular type of pet. It's in my pers like personal opinion the coolest type, but you know, different opinions. Um, and what I really want to, to uh, focus on here for the pet part is uh, pets that can be used for secure computation. And secure multi-party computation is one of these. And the way that a secure multi-party computation algorithm intuitively works is that you have two or more parties, they have some private inputs, they wish to compute a joint function on something, and they cannot find this trusted party. So intuitively, if you had this trusted party, then everything would be fine because it's both private, because it's trusted, so it's not gonna divulge the inputs to anybody who's not supposed to learn them. And it's correct because it's trusted, so it's gonna compute the right function. And MPC is essentially instantiating such a trusted party using communication. So it's a type of protocol where they send messages back and forth, these messages contain an encryption of these parties' inputs, and in the end they will learn the function that they wish to compute. And it provides like, in a formal, very strictly formal sense, the same guarantees as this trusted party. MPC can, be, can, can do a lot of things, uh, in particular what it can do and uh, is mostly in relation to the threat model, like what it can protect you against. Um, you can talk about an honest majority, dishonest majority, like how many parties there are, how big of a fraction there is that might misbehave in the protocol, what it means for them to misbehave, like do they actually send wrong messages, do they actually just leave the protocol, um, do they do some sort of mix between these two, uh, whether you have something that is secure assuming RSA, whether you have something that is secure assuming a quantum computer, um, whether you have a protocol that stops if somebody misbehaves, whether you have a protocol that is guaranteed to terminate, whether you have something that when it stops you can point to who did the wrong thing. Um, practicality depends a little bit on exactly how you combine all of these um, aspects of a threat model. I have this, uh, I think, very illustrative uh, sentence from a paper that shows that if you pick certain combinations you get something that runs in two minutes, if you pick another combination you get something that runs in I, I think it's like, it's several hours at least. Um, and I'm of course talking about MPC because I'm interested in using this for machine learning. So privacy preserving machine learning. And what privacy preserving machine learning is really is, you know, you have two or more parties and they want to do some sort of machine learning. In this example here, we have one party with some private information and another party that is a bank that has a machine learning algorithm that it uses to determine whether you're allowed to do, to take a loan or not. And the customer, the, I think it's a beagle in this case, doesn't trust the bank with his private information, so it says, let's use you know, PPML. Vice versa, the bank could say, you know, I don't trust you with my super fancy proprietary model, so I also want to use PPML, and everybody is happy. And this protects against privacy, right? Because that's what it gives you. Uh, it also makes sure that actually the model was evaluated correctly, because otherwise the protocol would abort. Okay, but now that we're talking about machine learning, it becomes, interesting to talk about this concept of algorithmic accountability, which is like taking a step away from this uh, you know, privacy aspect, now just talking about the uh, machine learning part. And algorithmic accountability is this idea that there should be an obligation to you know, report, explain, justify, et cetera, uh, the outputs of your algorithm, in particular the outputs of your machine learning algorithm. And why is this important? Well, it's important because a lot of these machine learning algorithms replace like a human process. And if you have some human that is in charge of determining whether you are supposed to uh, have a loan, for example, and this person turns out to discriminate against you or like give you a loan when you're not supposed to uh, receive a loan or whatever, then you have somebody you can now hold accountable. And there's no reason to expect that this accountability just disappears simply because you know the algorithm did it, so to speak. And of course, this is a very practical issue, I think that you're all very much aware of, right? But still, I have like a slide with some newspaper headlines. Um, for example, there's this, I think it's from the US, this, um, I think it's called uh, Compass system that is used to detect recidivism in, in criminals. And it turns out that this is heavily biased against African Americans. Uh, algorithm like machine learning has been used in healthcare uh, to, to determine healthcare risk. Uh, 
also very biased against minorities. There's these cases with people talking to their favorite AI chatbot and their chatbot decides to uh, convinces them, talks them into doing crazy things. Um, I don't have like an example uh, of, like of a headline here, but for example in Denmark this has been, it's been a big topic with this uh, Snapchat AI bot because apparently this one that Snapchat deployed was also very happy to give out advice on how to commit suicide to teenagers, which of course is like, you know, also you cannot just explain that away by saying, oh, the algorithm did it. Um, this, of course, AI in recruitment may also institutionalize discrimination, and it also happens in banking. So it basically everywhere you deploy a machine learning algorithm, you end up deploying, you know, whatever biases exist in this machine learning algorithm. Um, I remember somebody at a talk once said that, you know, some people consider machine learning as sort of like a, a whitewashing or a data washing. Um, you know, you put it through a machine learning algorithm and then suddenly, you know, no longer your problem if it does something bad. But this is, of course, not the case in reality, and um, it is actually something that should be addressed in, like, practical applications. Now, returning back to this PPML scenario, as I said, if we use MPC, then we have certainly solved the privacy issue because formally it is, that is what it does. Like, MPC or some other privacy-enhancing technology like fully homomorphic encryption or... Uh, I guess secure hardware to some degree, uh, what else, like zero knowledge proof systems and so on, they give you privacy. And this really fixes it. So if we have like the malicious scenario here where, you know, the bank will try to steal your information, then no problem because we use PPML. So uh, this privacy issue is like, that's, that's solved. But as we just saw, like this discrimination happens everywhere. So it's very valid and reasonable to now assume in the threat model, at least from the point of view of the client, but it also goes the other way around, that, you know, I'm not only interested in protecting my private data, I'm also interested to not dis get discriminated against. And it's also, it also shows up in scenarios where, you know, you sort of move the, the horns of the dog to the other dog, where, for example, the bank is receiving training data from some other place. If it's not interested in divulging the, the model so it can just train locally, why not also say that it's also interested in not receiving bad training data because somebody tries to poison the model of the bank? Um, and this is really because, like, MPC and other secure, like, privacy-enhancing technologies, like, they don't actually care about the inputs you're using. As long as it comes from, like, the proper domain, everything is, like, fair game. And this in particular means that the MPC does not really care about whether you use a fair or an unfair model as input. And what this actually means is that you now shift the responsibility of, of ensuring this accountability. You shift it to the function you're computing, not to the protocol itself. And that creates, like, a bunch of issues because it means that no longer, you're actually not computing this thing. When you talk about using a privacy-preserving uh, algorithm in practice, you're very rarely you're actually interested in something that just evaluates this model. You're, something, you're interested in something that evaluates it, but only if the model actually you know, fits the threat model and is like, has passed certain checks and balances and you know, ensures that it's robust and blah, 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 all of these things, which at least intuitively is like a way harder problem to solve and maybe something that is actually depending again on what you mean by like an attack on like the machine learning part of the system may actually be impossible. Because remember, you are now put like a secure computation protocol on top of all of this and somehow uh, guaranteeing that a model is like not biased and so on requires a lot of insight that you just removed. Um, it's very worth like here at the very end to point out that this actually has been observed before. There's these very nice uh, review papers that um, somebody here pointed out to me, so I'm very grateful for that. But basically, it has been observed that there is sort of like tension between privacy and then these other aspects that uh, is needed to guarantee this accountability. That being said, there was a paper last year at CCS that actually provides a particular instantiation for, this is for FHE, but where they show how to not only evaluate such a, like a neural network inference, but also get some robustness guarantees. Finally, I think it's worth mentioning that uh, a lot of this goes into like making the adversarial model a little bit more explicit and how it can be difficult to solve. And also, so there's of course also like a host of uh, like papers that talk about how to attack machine learning algorithms. And it's important to understand now that you sort of not only make this more explicit, but you also maybe enable attacks that cannot be made uh, otherwise. So there is this, I think this is like an incredibly interesting paper. They show basically that you can put a backdoor into a machine learning model and detecting it is the same as like breaking some cryptographic assumption. So if this is your threat model, it's essentially saying like it, we are out of luck. Um, but there's also these other like poisoning attacks where they assume that there's only small perturbations on the input. 
maybe these are not valid anymore because you're actually hiding the input itself. So now, I mean, if I'm told I cannot input you know, uh, a stop sign, I just input a stop sign. Nobody can see that it's a stop sign anyway. Okay. And that brings us to the discussion part. And the discussion is going to be where hopefully I would like you guys to like discuss internally for 10-ish minutes, and then we take like a you know, group discussion thingy afterwards. Um, I have some questions here to like get this going so you can like, you know, guide the discussion in like a meaningful direction, hopefully. Uh, first of these questions is, of course, is like this even a problem? Um, in the end, it's called a privacy-enhancing technology. It's not called a fairness-enhancing technology. So you, know, uh, you could solve this problem and say, I did my job. Now it's somebody else's job. I don't think that's completely valid, but that's my opinion, and we can discuss that you know, in 10 minutes' time or so. Um, second of all, I focused only on MPC because that's what I know the most about, but does this actually apply to other PETs? Is this also an issue for like fully homomorphic encryption or for like secure hardware or for whatever other things you'd like? Or is there some PETs maybe where this is like an easier problem to solve than other places or in other scenarios? Um, I think it's worth considering, especially in a practical sense, maybe not in a like uh, conceptual sense, because of course we do provide privacy even if we cannot ensure that the model is fair, the one we're evaluating. But in a practical sense, does this PPML actually fail if you cannot also guarantee algorithmic accountability? Like, is, is there many applications where, yeah, we might uh, be able to provide privacy, but it's going to be totally useless because I cannot guarantee that you don't get discriminated against? And then in some sense, I think, then the, the privacy-preserving machine learning, like, then it's like an interesting uh, like, th theory question, basically, but not really anything of like, practical uh, relevance. And finally, like, maybe also consider, is this something that is like, inherent to PPML, or like, does it actually occur in, in situations where we apply some PET uh, to, some th to some problem that is not involving machine learning, but some other application? Because they are applied like, all over the place. And with that, that's, yeah, that was it uh, that I wanted to say, so. Thanks. Yes. Oh, and um, of, course, of course, if there's any, like, clarifying questions, like, what do you mean by so and so and so, not so much, like, what's your opinion on so and so and so, then I will briefly answer those. But uh, I think really, like, focus on, like, getting this uh, discussion going. Thank you so much. We, we do have a question on the lip by uh, Jan Golber uh, asking about if the bank holds a plain text model and the model has some explainability uh, uh, that comes out of it, there shouldn't be an issue for a particular evaluation of the model. For a what? Um, do, do, do. Um, do, do, do. So I think if the, if the model is secret, if I'm understand correctly, um, it's, it's harder to get accountability. But if the model can can be explainable, if you can explain how our decisions comes out of the model, yeah. it's fine in this but case. But the explainability should be towards the, the client who's not supposed to learn the model. So it might be the possible that you know somebody internally in the bank can say, yes, this model is good, it's uh, not biased, but that's not really worth anything. It's like I looked at my own, you know, I, I audited it myself and said that this all looks good. It should be explainable towards the users of the system. And they're not supposed to learn the model because the bank doesn't want to divulge the model. So perhaps you can Press the button. Uh, perhaps we can have a quick discussion in small groups for about five minutes so that you can first go through this and then we'll just open it up for everyone. And the hope is it's not a hub and spoke where you, ask, uh, you tell us and then we respond, but more like there's more interaction across the board here. Maybe this case, if you can segregate in smaller groups. Uh, so move towards the center of each row, and then you form tiny groups. Try to aim at groups of like five, 10 people, max. All right, who's not in a group? Who's not in a group? Can you find people to join a group for discussions?
All right, uh, everybody. I think uh, let's give it one more minute. One more minute, and then uh, talk. Seven minutes left. Really? Okay, everybody, let's uh, bring it back. Yeah, re uh, something. Sit down and. Um, All right, we're gonna try to stop a bit the small discussion and come back to the main uh, yeah. room for takeaway. Yes. Uh, yeah. I think uh, Chris. Chris. Uh, yeah, I mean, I would like people to ask. Uh, Is there any know, group who would like to share there. some insight from discussions? Yes. Chris? Anyone wants to? Okay. No, no, mind. All right. I was like, you want to take uh, Ian's. Uh, yeah. uh, thank you for the talk. Um, it seems to us that one, as one problem, one aspect was not really talked about in your presentation, which is all right, I guess, but is that uh, when the um, user sends its um, input data to, to the private computing system, huh? um, how can you ensure that the user doesn't send data that uh, is good for him? For instance, if the bank wants to infer if the user is able to pay back a loan, uh, how can I say that? I, I mean, I will just send that I have a, a huge salary, I've paid my house. Yeah, you see. Exactly. It's, it's you. A, exactly a, an instance of the same issue, and it would, I guess, sort of fall under the, the last area there. Like that, uh, in practice, you do need a lot of checks. The point here of like using it, like explaining it in this PPML context, is that if you don't have these checks, then things go like badly wrong for the user who in many real life situations is gonna be like fairly honest. Like if, uh, you know, if you have an online form that says, you know, upload your tax forms here or whatever, and this will then input the salary or something, then people are not gonna try to cheat that system and input you know, something that is not their salary. Some people might, but like, I think the general user would not. But there need to be checks. Yes. Yeah, uh, so, uh about the last uh, the Fox 2022 uh, paper that you mentioned. Yeah. I didn't read it, but it seems like quite powerful. I've been, yes, and it's a, uh, it's a... Do you know the assumptions on which, like, you can insert these uh, backdoors, undetectable yeah. backdoors in anywhere, because this kind of thing sometimes is in a family of yeah. problems. So it's a, it's, it's a Fox paper, which is a foundation of... Uh, computer science paper, so it's a theory paper. Um, and it's more there for like dramatic effect rather than saying, oh, this is what people do in practice when they want to discriminate against you or something. Um, but it is there to show that you can place these backdoors into a model in a way that detecting this backdoor is essentially the same as like forging a digital signature, basically. Um, the assumptions they use is some learning with error type assumption, I think. Okay, let's work now. Yeah, perfect. Um, what we were discussing is that, in principle, you can also audit models in a black box manner, so where you don't have access to model weights, but you do only observe the responses of the model to certain queries. Um, so this is what people do when they look at whether ChatGPT is biased, for example, where people only also only have query access to the model. Um, I guess the problem in this setting is that here you have the bank that also wants to keep the model private, and so you, if you allow um, a large number of queries to the model, then you might have the problem that um, a malicious user might steal the model. Um, and one idea that came to mind since you mentioned these uh, backdoors is if we could have 
some kind of um, good backdoors um, that allow for um, an equivalent to a like zero knowledge proof. So where you, for example, insert certain records into the training data um, that are like artificially crafted so that then if you afterwards query the model with these records, um, you can detect whether um, the model used, for example, a certain loss function um, that is designed to be fair or fulfills other desirable properties. And the goal of this would be to kind of do this black box auditing, but with much fewer queries um, as you would have without these uh, specific records in inserted into the Right, right. I mean, that's a very interesting idea. Um, I don't know enough about how you train, like what happens when you train a machine learning model to say whether it's possible to have a model that has these um, checks, so to speak, and then train it to now be biased and still have these checks. But it certainly is uh, very interesting. Um, there was somebody online, Ian, I think, who mentioned that you could do some sort of like auditing. You could outsource this to a, a third party, essentially, or like a trusted auditor. Um, so then now you gain like explainability towards this auditor because now you're just giving the model in plain text to this guy and he's signing it and could hope that now everybody trusts that, you know, your favorite government agency who is responsible for this uh, auditing of your machine learning is, is actually trusted or does auditing correctly or whatever. And now it reduces the problem to like not checking directly that the model is fair, but maybe checking a digital signature or that it's certified by some authority. That might also be a way to do it. It, it, it's, it's a really quick comment where I think, I think yes, this is a problem, but it's, it's a useful one because I think as soon as you realize that you have both an accountability and a privacy problem, you just shouldn't do the ML. I think that's a very useful guideline. That's a very good observation. 